We've built a lot of projects, but we've built them all on breadboards and using the Uno. That's not really going to be a good long-term practice if you want to leave projects finished, uh, especially if you want to give them to somebody else, like as a gift or if you want to display them. So here's a halfway approach. And you can see that there's a few things going on, but the red thing is NFTDI adapter because these little guys don't have USB and the first tip from this is you don't have to use an Arduino Uno the Uno makes it easy for you to prototype and to plug wires in and to interface and it's got plenty of pins but if your project's small, then you can get away with one of these. And what we're talking about is the Arduino Pro Mini. And they're available in various places. You can get them from eBay. You can get an official one from SparkFun. And they're an excellent little board. They still have the 80Mega328. They still have plenty of pins, not as many as the Uno, but they have plenty. And they still have the analog inputs, which is great. They have a couple of different speeds, so they can run at 8 megahertz or 16 megahertz. And they come in 5 volt and 3 volt. So you've got to be careful that you get the one for your purpose. And because of that, these programmers, these FTDI friends and FTDI adapters, a lot of them now come with selectable 3 volt or 5 volt. So you can see I've got a 5 volt one here with a 5 volt jumper selected. You can't really tell by looking if it's not labeled which type it is. Uh, I have found that the ones with the white reset button do tend to be the 5 volt and the ones with the red reset tend to be the 3 volt. Fortunately these here are labeled which makes it a little bit easier. So you can solder legs on to make them breadboard friendly or you can solder them into your project and you program them as I say with these little boards here which once you've done programming it you can disconnect and it's ready to go. Now let me show you this funky thing. This is Adafruit's prototyping breadboard. So it's a breadboard format PCB that you can solder into just like it's protoboard but it's in breadboard format. So it's got the rails for ground and power and it's got the joined up rails for the vertical. But it's not a breadboard, you solder into it. And I find these really convenient. This I actually ripped out of one of my TARDIS projects to show you. And you can see here I've got a switch so I can turn it on and off. And that's the third thing. Uh, you really need to consider how you're going to power it if it's going to be a project. These do have the capability to accept and adapt to power so you can plug in power and it'll sort itself out for 5 volts. The obvious option then is to use a battery. So as you can see it can accept power and it's got a regulator and it'll use what it needs. Maximum input is 16 volts. So you can plug in power into the VCC pin and obviously connect your grounds 
and power it that way. And you've got the choice of using regular batteries, rechargeable batteries, but consider things like LiPo batteries if you want to go really small, really lightweight and low hassle. Personally though, my projects don't tend to be too tiny and I can get away with USB power adapters. And you might be thinking, well, how do I do that when it doesn't have USB? Well, the thing is USB just provides data, ground and power. So you can, you can snip a USB cable and get the, the power and the ground from it. So it's another option and makes it convenient for recharging because you don't have to have a special battery charger. You can just plug it into USB. So that's worth considering.